USS North Carolina, a name with history dating back over 180 years, a name shared with five warships. The first North Carolina was completed in 1820. She was an impressive 74-gun line of battleship. As the pride of the U.S. Navy, she sailed the seas for nearly 50 years. In 1863, at the height of the Civil War, the Confederate Navy constructed a 174-foot ironclad. She was built at the William and Benjamin Beery Shipyard on Eagles Island in the Cape Fear River, near the very location of the North Carolina Battleship Memorial today. For the United States Navy, the second North Carolina was an armored cruiser, which joined the fleet in 1908, becoming a pioneer in naval aviation. Today, USS North Carolina is a state-of-the-art Virginia-class submarine, SSN 777. Her commissioning ceremony was on May 3, 2008, in Wilmington, North Carolina, with many of the original World War II crew members from the BB-55 present. USS North Carolina BB-55, the showboat. Authorized on June 3, 1936 by the United States Congress, during a time of increasing global tensions, her keel was laid at the New York Naval Yard on October 27th. After nearly three years of construction, North Carolina was christened on June 13, 1940. North Carolina's governor, Clyde Huey, stated at the ceremony, its very power is fascinating. It commands our respect of the world. It speaks a language even a dictator can understand. The tones of his words were not lost on the audience. With the smash of the traditional champagne bottle by the governor's daughter, a cheering crowd of over 54,000 watched as the hull slid into the East River. For the next 10 months, construction continued as she was fitted out with her superstructure and various armaments. By the spring of 1941, much of the world's attention was on the deteriorating situation across the globe. As Adolf Hitler's fascist regime seized control over most of Europe, Japan occupied China and was threatening Southeast Asia. April 9, 1941. The United States Navy commissioned the first battleship in 16 years, North Carolina BB-55, widely acclaimed as the most powerful warship in the world. The Washington and the North Carolina were the first battleships to be commissioned since the 1923 treaty with Japan and the, all of the other nations. And we were first. During her shakedown trials, the USS North Carolina made frequent trips to the New York Naval Yard for modifications. Notable journalist Walter Winchell often reported of sightings of the powerful warship on his radio show, calling her the showboat after the Broadway musical. December 7, 1941. News of the Japanese sneak attacks on Pearl Harbor came across the radio of the USS North Carolina as she was on shakedown, testing her guns and equipment and training the crew. The implications of this vicious assault on the United States Naval Fleet were staggering. As the showboat unknowingly prepared to face off against the Imperial Japanese Navy. And then we left at the end of May, 30th of May, through the canal, up the west coast. 11th of July, we ended up in Pearl Harbor. Crowds began to gather as news of an approaching ship spread across Pearl Harbor. And they were cheering like crazy. I think we, and we always said, they think we won the war already and we hadn't even got into it yet. <laughs> and uh, and then, uh, then from there we went to uh, Guadalcanal and from Guadalcanal to Tokyo for the next four years. August 7th, 1942. North Carolina was assigned the task of escorting the aircraft carriers Enterprise and Saratoga for her first battle in the campaign of the Solomon Islands and Guadalcanal. The Solomon's campaign erupted in a bloody battle. North Carolina proved herself in a baptism of fire 
On August 24th, 1942, at the Battle of the Eastern Solomons, shooting down seven enemy planes, firmly establishing her role as protector of the aircraft carrier. September 15th, 1942. A devastating day for the United States Navy. Three torpedoes launched from the Japanese sub I-19 struck the USS Wasp, engulfing her decks in flames. I was going up to my, uh, my actual workstation. I thought I was working and I looked up and I saw the, the Wasp get hit with the to torpedoes, two of them. I was looking out and I was watching the Wasp burn. So I says, whoa, what's going on here? Because we wasn't at general quarters. As North Carolina began to pick up speed, keeping up with her task force, an explosion rocked the battleship. As a torpedo slammed into her port bow, a geyser of water and oil shot into the air as high as the superstructure and came crashing down on the deck, washing one sailor overboard. Four other men also lost their lives in the third deck passageway and washroom, and over 23 men were injured. And uh, we left the convoy we were ridden, we headed back to Pearl Harbor. And on the way back, we stopped at uh, one of the islands and we buried our dead. October 10th, 1942. The showboat arrived in Pearl Harbor for repairs. Dry dock exposed the full extent of her damage, a 32 foot long by 18 foot high hole in her port bow. Remarkably, she was repaired in 21 days and returned to combat. The war raged on. Weeks became months patrolling the Pacific waters. By November of 1943, the Solomon Islands were in American hands leading to a full offensive strike across the Pacific, adding pressure to the Japanese forces. During the bombardment of Iwo Jima, the showboat fired her 16-inch and 5-inch guns on the firing line for four days. July 17, 1945. North Carolina began the bombardment of the Hitachi Industrial Complex, along with five other battleships on the east coast of Honshu. The Japanese counterattacks never came, and in early August, orders were given to cease all operations and retreat seaward 300 miles. August 6th, news of the atomic bomb being dropped on Hiroshima came, and on August 9th, Nagasaki. Three long weeks passed before Japan's formal surrender. September 2nd, 1945. Captain B. Hall Hanlon announced to the crew of the USS North Carolina that the war was officially over. September 6th, 1945. The showboat headed for home, stopping in Pearl Harbor first. She then sailed down the west coast, through the Panama Canal, arriving in Boston on October 17th. June 27th, 1947. USS North Carolina BB-55 was decommissioned to the reserve fleet in Bayonne, New Jersey. There, she rested in relative obscurity for over 14 years until the United States Navy announced in 1957 that the battleship North Carolina was scheduled to be scrapped. As news of her imminent fate spread, two notable Wilmingtonians took action. James S. Craig and Hugh Morton launched a campaign sponsored by North Carolina Governor Luther Hodges to save their state's namesake. It seemed to start off as a, a grassroots thing, uh, the theme of which I believe was uh, school children donating their pennies. And of course that mushroomed into, I think, uh, much more than that. 700,000 school children have already given nickels, dimes, and quarters. I have to look at Governor Sanford, uh, Hugh Morton, who were visionaries that thought about bringing this ship here to Wilmington and all of the uh, people that were involved in that process. Because this was a pretty tough process to bring a, a, a Navy warship of that size and magnitude back to the state of North Carolina and then bring it here in Wilmington in the 1960s. October 2nd, 1961. 
The showboat made her final voyage up the Cape Fear River as onlookers crowded the banks just to get a glimpse of the salvaged warship. I worked in the downtown area and uh, of course everyone knew it was coming up the river that day. Long journey though from, from Southport, so I kept running down to, the, to, to Water Street to, to see if I could see it and finally I did see it off in the distance. And so then I perched myself on the steps of the Customs House, which is now the federal building. Uh, and watched it come up the river. And uh, it, it was an ominous sight. It was a uh, faded gray. Uh, all the uh, small caliber gun turrets were covered with a metal dome. But it looked like a ghost ship, it really did. I think four massive seagoing tugs were uh, two on each side, bringing it up the river very slowly. So we watched them as they made their turn into the, the dredged out slip. They didn't quite make the turn sharp enough and the bow went into the mud. Those big tugboats reversed their engines and they were pulling and straining and pulling and straining. And finally the battleship, which was all 729 feet, just stretched out straight across the river. Anyway, when the ship came out of the mud and started coming back, uh, those tugs reversed their thrust and they were doing all they could do to, to stop that backward movement. And uh, they did stop it, but not before the stern bumped into the arc. And uh, while it didn't severely damage it, it did crush one side. It, that was a concrete hull, by the way. April 29th, 1962. After extensive restoration, the North Carolina was dedicated as a memorial to the men and women of North Carolina who served during World War II and the nearly 10,000 servicemen and women who gave their lives. Today, the battleship North Carolina stands as a testimony to the greatest generation. The showboat's teak decks are now manned by a different crew. A small staff oversees her operations. I'm uh, Captain Terry Bragg. Uh, I grew up in North Carolina, in Jacksonville, North Carolina. In 2008, I retired after 30 years in the Navy as a Navy captain. And uh, I'm one of many a uh, long line of uh, executive directors who have been hired to run the day-to-day -day management staff. I'm Museum Services Director here at the Battleship. I've been here 20 years. I came in March of 1990 as the curator, um, but I didn't, you know, I didn't know a lot about the Navy. They wanted to hire somebody that was a, an actual museum professional, someone that would approach interpreting the ship with the family in mind, uh, that I would interpret things from the perspective that I didn't know a lot about the Navy or ships, and therefore anything that I did would hopefully make the ship accessible to the average visitor. The battleship North Carolina is a major tourist destination, attracting over 200,000 visitors each year. Self-guided walking tours weave through the wartime vessel. Programs offer guests unique and personal experiences. There's um, programs set for school groups and scout groups, and so you have uh, educational programs. Then you have more of what we call adult learning programs, and those would be hidden battleship, the firepower, power plant, where um, people come in and they get this really intense um, understanding of how uh, the ship operated and that's usually handled by our curators and museum department. North Carolina is one of few surviving vessels from the most powerful naval force ever assembled. The job of preserving her history and maintaining her integrity is an imperative mission for the battleship staff. We're all just caretakers and then when we're gone there'll be another generation of caretakers and you hope that that continues. We're, we're not just a, uh, a memorial, we're not just a tourist attraction, but uh, when you have a 729-foot naval ship, 40,000 tons, uh, you, you have an obligation to, to the prime artifact, which is the ship. Please enjoy your visit at the USS North Carolina Battleship Memorial.